Dear friends, China is developing a new type of train that can reach speeds of up to 1,000 km h, 621 minuitor b. This train is so fast that it could take you from New York to Los Angeles in just over two hours, a journey that currently takes about four hours by plane. Japan is famous for its Shinkansen bullet trains, which run at speeds of around 330 km h, and the maglev train in Shanghai, which can reach a maximum speed of 440 collar kilometers h. But if a train were to reach speeds of 1,000 dollar kilometers h, it would clearly exceed all current rail standards and even surpass many commercial airplanes, which fly at around 930 kilometer h. In the past, we've witnessed significant advancements in transportation, from horse-drawn carriages to cars, from propeller planes to jet engines, and now we stand on the brink of a new revolution in travel hyperspeed transportation technology. With the development of systems like maglev trains and Hyperloop, we can envision a future where traveling between cities takes just a few hours instead of an entire day. To better understand this progress, let's take a look at the development of the railway industry. The first steam locomotives could reach speeds of 50 km h, a huge leap compared to horse-drawn carriages at the time. Then came the invention of the automobile, with speeds ranging from 60 to 80 km h, and this breakthrough made people feel like it was incredibly fast. In 1964, Japan introduced the first high-speed train, the Shinkansen, which could travel at around 220 km h. This was a major milestone in transportation, opening a new era of fast travel. With its modern design and ability to run at high speeds, the Shinkansen gave the people of Japan the ability to travel faster and more conveniently than ever before. Since then, Shinkansen models have been continuously improved, with some versions today reaching speeds of 330 km h. Another significant milestone in transportation took place in 2004 in China when the first commercial maglev train line was launched in Shanghai. With the ability to reach a maximum speed of 480 km h, this train not only reduced travel time, but also enhanced the passenger experience. This was a major step forward that solidified China's leadership in the development of superfast transportation. However, China didn't stop there. While the maglev train in Shanghai was built using German technology, China quickly realized that they needed to develop this technology on their own to avoid relying on foreign countries. In 2016, China introduced its first domestically developed maglev system in the city of Changsha. Although the speed of this system only reaches around 100 to 120 km h, it marked an important step in building an entirely independent maglev network, paving the way for future innovations and developments. The Changsha maglev line, despite costing around $800 million to build, is relatively modest compared to other infrastructure projects. This line has the capacity to carry 370 passengers per trip and has been operating successfully for many years. While its speed isn't particularly impressive, it remains a significant step forward in the development of transportation, helping to bring cities closer together and opening up new opportunities for travel, goods movement, and diverse job opportunities for the people. This also reflects a trend in the transportation industry, where each advancement is built upon previous inventions, expanding what humans can achieve in terms of movement and connectivity. Currently, with the involvement of the China Aerospace Corporation, CASIC, China is entering a revolution in ground transportation. CASIC isn't just looking to create a slightly faster train, they want to completely change the way we think about transportation. The new system they are developing aims for an incredibly impressive speed, 1000 km h, nearly the speed of sound. To achieve this, they are combining two groundbreaking technologies, magnetic levitation, maglev, and vacuum tubes. You might be thinking, isn't this similar to the Hyperloop that Elon Musk mentioned? The answer is yes, but not exactly. Both technologies use low-pressure tubes to achieve incredibly high speeds, but the way they operate is very different. However, before diving into the details of these differences, think about what the biggest barrier is for any vehicle in motion. It's air resistance. The faster you go, the more air becomes an invisible wall, hindering movement. Modern high-speed trains typically have a maximum speed of about 500 calories kilometers h, and when they exceed this threshold, they almost have to fight against air resistance. The new high-speed train system that CASIC is developing will run in a low-vacuum environment, which significantly reduces air resistance. Thanks to this reduction, the train can achieve an impressive speed. 
Maglev technology, short for magnetic levitation, is a method of transportation that uses powerful magnetic forces to lift and propel the train forward without the need for wheels, on tracks like traditional trains. Instead, the maglev train hovers over a magnetic field, completely avoiding contact with the tracks. This reduces friction, allowing the train to travel faster and more efficiently than traditional transportation. The concept of magnetic levitation is not new. It was first proposed in the early 20th century by scientists like Robert Goddard and Emil Bashley, who suggested using magnetic fields for transportation. However, it's only in the past few decades that this technology has truly been applied on a wide scale. Traditional maglev trains usually lift the train about 10 mm above the tracks, creating a small gap between the train and the rail. However, with the new maglev system, the train can be lifted up to 100 mm, which is 10 times more than the older systems. This larger gap enhances stability and reduces disturbances, especially when the train is traveling at high speeds. This improves performance and helps the train run more smoothly throughout the journey. Additionally, the train's body is made of carbon fiber, which reduces weight while still ensuring structural durability. This not only helps the train go faster, but also makes it more efficient in its operation. The new maglev system uses superconducting technology, which is incredibly smart. When certain materials are cooled to very low temperatures, they become superconductive, capable of conducting electricity with zero resistance. Thanks to superconductivity, the process of levitating and propelling the train becomes much more efficient and stable. This may sound amazing, but will it work in practice? Let's take a look at a few experiments to find out. In Shaanxi Province, China, a 2-kilometer test track has been built. While 2 kilometers may not be very long, it's enough to test the key systems. The results of the tests were very close to theoretical predictions, and during the testing process, three key factors were emphasized. First, the precise navigation system. At high speeds, even the smallest deviation can lead to serious consequences. The system needs to ensure that the train always follows the predetermined route with extreme accuracy. Second, the stable suspension system. The train must maintain a stable height above the tracks, without swaying or oscillating. This is crucial for passenger comfort and safety. Third, the safe stopping system. Going fast is easy, but stopping safely is a major challenge. Tests showed that the system could effectively brake and bring the train to a controlled stop, even from very high speeds. These tests have proven that the basic principles of maglev technology are entirely feasible. The next step will be to extend the system over longer distances, with the hope of creating a truly modern and high-speed mode of transportation. With the ability to travel at speeds of up to 1,000 km h, we could create one-hour economic zones meaning large urban areas where every point within the region is less than an hour's travel apart. This would completely change how people organize their lives and work. Imagine living in one city but working in another 1,000 kilometers away and only spending an hour to travel between them. This could blur the lines between urban areas, making it easier for people to commute without the fatigue or time-consuming journeys we face today. Not only that, but long-distance relationships would also become much easier as you could visit family, friends, or business partners in a short amount of time. From an environmental perspective, this technology could also bring significant benefits. If maglev trains could replace short flights, we would see a substantial reduction in carbon emissions. Aviation is currently one of the largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, especially CO2. Flights, particularly short ones, consume a lot of fuel and emit large amounts of carbon into the atmosphere. This not only contributes to climate change, but also puts pressure on global emission reduction targets. Therefore, any technology that can replace this mode of transportation with a cleaner solution is highly worth considering. However, while these benefits may sound appealing, there are still many significant challenges to overcome. One of the first issues is the cost of building the infrastructure. Constructing vacuum tubes that span thousands of kilometers is not a cheap project, and the cost of building these routes will be enormous. Furthermore, integrating the maglev system with the existing railway network will also be a complex task, requiring a seamless combination of new technology and current infrastructure. The cost of building a traditional high-speed rail line can range from $20 million to $100 million per kilometer, depending on terrain and other factors. With a maglev system in a vacuum tube, that number could reach hundreds of billions of dollars. Just to build one route, safety is a crucial factor. 
At such high speeds, even the smallest malfunction could have serious consequences, potentially costing the lives of all passengers. Therefore, emergency systems must be flawless, with no room for error. It's also worth noting that China is not the only country pursuing this technology. In the United States, several companies are researching the Hyperloop technology, which shares many similarities with China's vacuum maglev system. While progress has been slower, there have been successful test runs. Currently, several states in the U.S. are also considering Hyperloop projects. The main difference between Elon Musk's Hyperloop and China's T-Flight lies in the design and objectives. Both are concepts for ultra-fast transportation, but their approaches are quite different. Hyperloop aims for a speed of 1-200 dollars kilometer h, using pods that travel inside low-pressure tubes. On the other hand, China's T-Flight targets a speed of 1,000 km h using maglev technology inside a tube that doesn't require absolute vacuum conditions. Currently, Hyperloop primarily exists on paper, and even Virgin Hyperloop has abandoned its passenger transport development. In contrast, China is leveraging its existing experience with maglev systems to continue expanding and upgrading its technology. While similar projects have attracted attention worldwide, China's approach, developing technology in an evolutionary direction, starting from traditional maglev systems and gradually pushing the limits, may prove to be a more successful strategy. What about you? Are you ready to live in a world where we can travel between cities at speeds faster than sound? Do you think such speed would make you feel uncomfortable or a little anxious? Share your thoughts in the comments below.